I asked for something for my birthday a couple weeks ago that I've never asked for before. And I think it got the attention of people in my family. Because that doesn't sound like something I'd ask for. I asked for an emergency kit for my car. For some reason, uh, lately, I has just been intensely and frequently on my mind to be prepared for emergencies. And I've always been sort of concerned about it, you know, and I'm thinking about for the church and for home and family and everything. But I don't know why, but for this last little season, last several months, I have been very concerned. And so I, I, I realized I don't have an emergency kit in my car. It's so funny, this last week I was someplace else away from home, and someone said, well, do you have a Band-Aid? I said, yes, I do, in my car. <laughs> That's the first time I've been able to say yes to that. So that was awesome. <laughs> Uh, in the same vein, this fall in September, we are going to be bringing a first aid and CPR training to all of our volunteers at, at our church in September. I'm going to be asking all of our volunteers to come. Why? Because we want to be prepared for emergencies. It's just being prepared. I, and I, I hope that being prepared makes the emergency even less likely. That would be amazing. That would be awesome. But our part is to be prepared. I have a little quiz for you. For everybody who's in the building right now, there are nine exits from our building to the outside. Do you know where all nine are? So you don't need to say anything out loud necessarily right now, but just do you know where all nine exits are? Are all of them equally as good? Where do they lead? I'll show you one on the screen. Do you know where this one is? You know where that exit is? That's a really good exit to go out, actually. Uh, but right now during construction, it's a little hard to get there. Uh, but it won't be long until there's a nice smooth pathway. You can get there now, actually. Exits right out to the street. When you're, when you're not prepared for something, it could hurt you. So let's be prepared, right? And I think that's one of the things I want to do when we're all together for uh, first aid and CPR training, I want to take everybody on a complete tour of the building and just show you all the paths in case of a fire, in case of whatever, that, that you would just know. So today, I'm continuing on in our series. It's a little mini series within Proverbs. We're studying the book of Proverbs this summer, but within that, a little mini series, essential mindsets. Somebody say essential. Yeah, yeah. we're looking at essential biblical, godly, wise mindsets. And they are mindsets, they are proverbs for a great life. So let me see your hands if you want a great life. Yes, me too, you're in good company. We all want a great life. So God has wisdom for you to have a great life. And I, I want to talk to you today about a unique one. I don't know if I've ever really talked about this mindset before in church, but it is straight out of the book of Proverbs. And it is the productivity mindset. Productivity. Productivity. So if you have a Bible, or if you have a Bible on a, on a device, would you turn to Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 to 11. Why hold it in your hands? It's going to be on the screen. Yes, I know. But if you hold it in your hands, you can, you can check out the context what happens before or after. You can read it again for yourself after it goes off the screen, and you can see if what I'm telling you is really in the Bible, which it is. <laughs> Proverbs 6, 6 to 11. So we're going to get there in just a minute, but what is productivity? And what is a productive mindset or a productivity mindset? Well, productivity is simply producing things. It's creating things. It's making stuff happen, getting work done. So we're talking about a mindset in life that is a wise mindset, and it is a mindset of getting stuff done. Like that is a biblical value. And God says, when you live with this mindset, you are living wisely. It is a wise thing to do. So we're talking today about getting stuff done. Now, it's interesting the time, of, the, just the, the era that we live in today. Because during the pandemic that we just went through not too long ago, we saw something called the Great Resignation. And during this time, millions of people said, I quit work. 
and productivity went down. And there, there were a lot of things, there's a lot of factors, there's a lot of layers, I know, but one of the factors about the supply chain shortages, remember when we couldn't get toilet paper? <laughs> one, of the things, one of the things that contributes to that is when people aren't doing their work for various reasons. Some may have been sick, some might have said, ah, I think I just like being home in my slippers. For whatever reason, there was this great resignation. It seems to be winding down, most people say today, although there are some people out there still saying, oh no, there's a lot more people going to quit this year. I don't know. But employee productivity is at the lowest it has been in the last 75 years that it's been measured in this way. So right now, employee productivity is at an all-time low like just looking at least within the last 75 years since we've been measuring it. So recently, there's been a 3% increase in the number of hours worked. So people are coming back to work. So the number of hours has increased, but the output has only increased by 0.02%. So there's a lot more work being done, but productivity is still really low. And productivity is a wise way to live. It is a biblical mindset. So Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 to 8. We're gonna, today we're going to contrast a tiny little animal and a large starchy vegetable. Okay, so get ready for this contrast here. So verse 6. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Some uh, translations say, you sluggard, you slacker. And whenever I hear this passage, I always think back to one of the first pastoral positions I had where I, I, I was the worship pastor, so I was on staff, and I didn't show up for 6 a.m. prayer meeting, and I got a, a call from our senior pastor who left a voicemail. Do you remember when we used to have little, I don't know, some of you don't remember this, we had little tape recorders that recorded the voicemail, and you rewind it and listen to it. And I'll never forget this message he he left. He left me this message. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. (laughs) Learn from their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, They labor hard all summer, gathering food for the winter. So Solomon, called the wisest man who ever lived, king of Israel a long time ago, wrote a couple books of the Bible here. He wrote Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, most of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. So he's written uh, Song of Solomon. He's written the Bible. This is a very wise man. And he said, take a lesson from the ants. Look up. Pay attention. Notice. What are the ants doing? And do that too. So the the first and our and our two things we're contrasting is the ant. And the ant has the productivity mindset. It has this essential, wise, get stuff done mindset. I've got a picture showing you three ants working together, bringing what they need back to the hive. And they're, 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 they're working so hard. So what is it about ants? And uh, in this, just, just from this passage, Proverbs 6, 6 to 8, what is it about the ants that makes them productive? What are they doing? How are they living their lives? Well, first of all, they take initiative. Ants are self-starters. He makes a point to say they work hard all summer knowing it's good. It's a wise thing to do for them, even though they don't have a governor or like a boss, or a supervisor, standing over each ant saying, come on now, keep busy. They don't need that, because they are living wisely. They are living with a productivity mindset. I know that when I hire, and as as a lead pastor, I, I, I have been hiring for years one of the things that I look for in a person is, are you a self-starter? Am I going to have to tell you everything to do, or can you, uh, can you notice what needs to be done and do it without me having to tell you? Can you notice? Can you see what needs to be done? And that's the way the ants are. They're like, it's summer, but winter's coming. We noticed. We better be, so we better be storing stuff away so that we're okay in the winter. Another thing about ants is they work together. 
And that, that's really interesting that Solomon, of all the creatures that he could have pointed to for a lesson, he pointed to ants. And ants are amazing. There are, there are really bad ants, like warrior ants, that they, they will build a bridge over something to get to their prey. Like they worked, a bridge of themselves, an ant bridge of themselves. Like they work together so well. And each ant that does its part benefits everybody else. Ants also take advantage of the season. They look around and they go, it's summertime. Green leaves are everywhere. Plants are everywhere. Food is abundant. There's no snow impeding our travel. They look around, they see the season, and they go, we are going to take advantage of this season. Why am I talking to you about this? Because this mindset that ants have is a wise mindset. It is a biblical mindset. It's a productivity mindset. And Solomon is saying to you and to me, have this mindset. Get stuff done. See what needs to be done. Work together. Take advantage of the season. Another thing that ants know is really interesting. We as humans, we all uh, often talk about balance. I don't want my life to be out of balance. I got to be in balance. Balance is overrated and misunderstood. Balance should mean in summer, I work harder. I work harder because in winter, I won't be able to. That's the balance. The balance isn't, well, I put in my 30 minutes today. That's all the food I'm going to gather for winter. That's not balance. But we kind of think I should have, balance means I have equal food time, play time, rest time, work time. That's not the balance of the Bible. It's not equal parts of everything. It's what is needed right now in this season and in this time. Work-life balance is seasonal. So, for example, perhaps when the kids are babies, mom doesn't get to work as much or doesn't get to work outside the home. She's not doing as much there because she's doing this other thing here. Well, that's out of balance. No, that is a seasonal balance. What season are you in? In this season, this is what you can do and no more. In this season, you can do more and you ought to. Do you see the difference? Yeah. That's biblical balance. Biblical balance is not, I must have equal amounts of everything in my life. That's not biblical balance. Biblical balance is live wisely and see what is God calling you to do in this moment. What is this season about? Okay, so that's the ant. That's the mindset we want to ad adopt, productivity mindset. Let's contrast that with a large starchy vegetable, the couch potato. <laughs> Who's eating couch potato chips? Proverbs chapter 6, going on now in that same passage, verse 9. But you lazy bones, couch potato, slacker, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. So the lazy bones lacks this productivity mindset. The lazy bones person does not have this biblical wise mindset. What happens in the life of a person who is uh, uh, oversleeping, over, over resting, out of balance, and not productive? Well, Proverbs chapter 24, verses 30 to 34, talks about what happens in that person's life. Here's the outcome. Solomon says, I walked by the field of a lazy person, the vineyard of one with no common sense, and I saw it was overgrown with nettles. They are a type of weed that sting you and want to keep you out of its area. I saw that it was overgrown with nettles, it was covered with weeds, and its walls were broken down. So in other words, one rock at a time got knocked over, hit, fell down in the stone wall around the vineyard, but it was never repaired. And then as I looked and thought about it, I learned this lesson. Have you heard these verses before? A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. 
So we're, we're trying to learn biblical mindsets. That we want to think like God so that we live in, 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 a, in a life that is modeled after God and where we find where we thrive and where we succeed. And most of us, I suspect, uh, in the hearing of my voice, including myself, think, well, I'm not lazy. I'm not that guy who only lays around eating potato chips on the couch. I'm not that guy. But we, we tend to compare ourselves with the worst negative example, when what we need to do is compare our lives with Jesus, with his example, and then see, am I lazy or am I not lazy? Has that, am I a lazy bones? Has that, has that come into my life? There are some subtle forms of laziness that have nothing to do with laying on the couch. And so you and I, and I'm in this list, you might have to deal with laziness in our life and get rid of it if you're wanting your needs met without working for them. If, that, if your mindset is, I want my needs met, but I don't want to do any effort for them. I don't want to do the work. I want it to be handed to me. That is a sign of laziness, and that's not the productivity mindset. Depending on bailouts, depending on handouts as a way of living, that, that might be a sign laziness has crept in somewhere. Relying on public assistance as a permanent supply when you don't have a permanent disability. Now, if you have a disability, that is why the assistance is there. That, that is a different thing. But if that's not the case, I do remember growing up, there were, there were times, uh, there was one person I knew, that he said, you know, I got out of, um, I won't say the organization, I, I, this uh, organization where I worked because of a back disability, but I'm fine now, so I'm working on the side. That's wrong. Productivity is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step up and work. If I'm able, he was able, but he was collecting disability nonetheless. That's not right. That's not the biblical way of living. Uh, another, here's another thing. Oh, and it start, This is starting to drill down and hurt me. Procrastinating. Procrastinating when you have a tough decision or a conversation that you know you need to have. That is a sign that there's a little bit of laziness creeping in there when you need to do something difficult or confusing or time-consuming. What we need to have is a productivity mindset. I've got a hard thing to do. I need to rise up and do it. That is the, that's the biblical wise way to live. Uh, doing what you want instead of what you know needs to be done. That's a sign laziness might be creeping in in that area of your life. Um, you, you ha the, the, the thing is, you, ha you have to gear up for doing what needs to be done. You might have to gather some tools. You might have to find a YouTube video. You might have to figure it out, how to do it. But doing what you want, that just comes naturally. <laughs> That's piece of cake. Um, here's, here's another one. Maybe, maybe you see yourself in one of these. Having a life that's a mess. A messy workspace. Ouch. Messy car. Could be a sign of laziness has crept in. Sleeping too much. We're supposed to sleep every day. Somewhere between seven and nine hours. We're supposed to sleep that. But sleeping too much is a sign. Maybe laziness has crept in there. Do you know what Newton's, uh, Isaac Newton's first law of motion is? A body at rest tends to remain at rest. <laughs> but he wasn't talking about bodies. <laughs> but it does apply to our bodies also. Another sign of laziness could be busyness with the wrong activity. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. Yeah, playing Call of Duty or Minecraft. <laughs> Scrolling through social media feeds. Distractions. Squirrels. We, we can be so busy but not productive. Do you see the difference? You can be very busy and worn out, but not productive. But what, what God is calling us to is productivity, getting good stuff done, getting valuable stuff done. And God is the ultimate model. He's the ultimate role model for the productivity mindset. God worked. God worked. When he created the world, the Bible says he worked. He worked for six days, and then he ceased he rested 
for one day. And in, when doing that, he embedded into the universe. Like it, it works right when we work six days. We're busy six days. We're working. We're being productive. We're creating six days. And every seventh day, we step back from work. And that is balance. You see how work, and it's not like equal parts work, rest. No, it's not equal parts work or rest. That is not God's balance at all. Balance is six days work, one day rest. And that's a challenge for me, the one day rest, getting that one in there. That, that, that is, that's something I need to work on as well because that is God's plan for a productive, uh, for, for a productive life, a life that thrives. Before God created the world, he knew that he wanted an earthly family. And so he worked to provide for us now and forever. He created a planet for us to live on. And God also planned ahead to give us the free will to follow him. He did not want an army of robots. He wanted a family. He wanted people who would be with God, who would love him, who would talk with him, who would work with him. One of the first things God did for the, for the first two people, he said, I got a job for you. I want you to go and do this. And it was a big, humongous list. But God was calling them to productivity. And so from the moment, though, God created humanity, he said, I'm going to also create a backup plan in case they reject me. And from the moment the first people sinned, God was already working to redeem mankind, to redeem humanity. He planned to send his one and only son to die for our sins on the cross and in his death provide eternal life for us. That took work. And I, uh, one of the articles or, or, or books I read this week and just in studying talked about how Jesus worked that whole week of Holy Week. And then he rested on Saturday and then he rose again on Sunday. Really cool way to look at that, at how God did his work. And even, even then, uh, Jesus' body was resting, and then he raised to new life. Pretty, pretty cool uh, just to see that uh, symbolism in there. When Jesus took on flesh and bones and came to earth, he was able to say at the end, his, one of his final prayers to the Father, Father, I have completed the work you gave me to do. Work is not a secular thing. Like, work is not just the worldly thing. That's just out there. But my life with God is over here. It's all, all of your life is supposed to be life with God, including your work, everything. Productivity leads to blessing. Productivity leads to blessing. And Solomon offers a lot of wisdom about productivity to the next generation. That's the mindset that he wants us to have. Solomon wrote over in the book of Ecclesiastes, he wrote some Proverbs there. And I found some productivity hacks from Ecclesiastes in the Bible, chapter 11, starting in verse 1. He said, send your grain across the seas. In other words, raise some stuff, raise some crops, do something, produce something. Send it off to market. And in time, profits will flow back to you. So he said this is a wise way to live. Like create something, produce something that's valuable. Send it off so they can bless others and meet needs. And in time, profits will flow back to you. That is a biblical promise, a biblical principle. So the hack is be patient for the results of your hard work. He doesn't say it's going to flow back in five minutes. But he said, produce something of value, produce something good, and, and in time it will flow back to you. You will see the results of your hard work in any area of life. Uh, verse, jumping down to verse 4, he said, farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest. And that is, that's another one What just gets me. Oh, my goodness. It's easy for me to wait for perfect conditions to do a certain thing, especially if it's a big thing. I want things to be, I want to have all the information. I want the, the setting to be right. But Solomon is calling you and I to take initiative now. Don't wait for perfect conditions. Take a step now. Take a, be productive now. Don't wait till everything's perfect. 
to, to be able to, uh, to, to take a job, to do a thing, to, to, to create. And then down to verse 6. Plant your seed in the morning and keep busy all afternoon, for you don't know if profit will come from one activity or another, or maybe both. And here we see a principle of diversify your efforts and see what God's blessing. See what he, see what he, will, what he will bless for you. So the bottom line here, God provides for you later through your productivity now. God provides for you later through your productivity now. So God is your provider, amen? God is my provider. Some stuff he just gives you. And other stuff he says, I gave you the ability to work. I gave you the ability to think and create and be artistic. I, I gave you this ability to provide for you. And sometimes we, we can just sit back and just say, God, I want you to provide. And God's saying, I have. I gave you those skills. I gave you those opportunities. I gave you those friends. I gave you this church. I gave you this setting. I gave you this workplace. I gave you this neighborhood. I've given you so much. So we then need to see that one of the ways God provides for us is through us being productive. And God is looking out. He's already in your future. He knows what's coming for you. And one of the ways he provides for you later is through your productivity now. God calls you to be productive so that you will also be prepared. Today may be summer, but you never know when winter season will come along. What's a winter season? Well, uh, if you lose your job or become unable to work, that's a winter season. Uh, Maybe when someone that you depend on moves away or passes away. Unexpected expenses that come up, car expenses, or the furnace goes out, or medical expenses. Those are winter seasons, but you can prepare in summer now. And I believe that deep down, we all want to be prepared. I want to be prepared. I want to be prepared for emergencies, but I have been looking around going, I'm not. So I'm taking some steps to be prepared. We all want to be productive. We all want to be prepared. We want to provide for our families and we want to have what we need when we need it. So why don't we? Why does it have to be in the Bible? Why did he have to say it to us? Why, why, why do we miss it sometimes? Well, sometimes you feel depleted by hard work when you don't see many immediate results. It can be discouraging, honestly. When you've been trying to be productive, you've been working, you've been uh, you've been disciplined, you've been trying, but you're not really seeing an immediate result. You can feel depleted. Or you might envy those who seem like, man, they didn't have to work for anything. They just got everything handed to them. And it, it, you, you might feel envious of them. It seems like, man, they never struggle. You feel worn out by constant demands. Kids, the boss, the whatever, the demands. You might yearn for a life of ease. And all of these things kind of get in there and make it so like we don't necessarily choose a productive mindset. Maybe maybe you're confused about what step to take next. Like, I feel like I should be being productive. I feel like I'm not being very productive, but I don't know what to do. Or, or maybe you know what you need to do to be more productive, but you dread the confrontation, the confrontation that it's going to take to bring about a change in your schedule or your work or or, or your role, or, or whatever. Also, just practically, the punishment that God laid on humanity for our sin, one of the punishments was that the ground is now going to be a lot harder to work. That was because we chose to go our own way instead of God's way. So there is a certain element where it, it is just harder, uh, but that doesn't mean we get to just not work. It's easier to choose what you want to do instead of what you need to do. It's easier. There are a lot of reasons why we don't have a productive mindset in er every area of our lives. You can observe the ants' ways and their outcomes. Like, what do they get? They're well provided for. They've got each other. They've got a community. They've got winter provisions. You can contrast that with the slacker's ways and his outcomes. Broken down fence weeds everywhere, the crops aren't producing like they should. So what do we need to do? Renew your mindset. See what I did there? Renew your mindset. The Bible says we know all the time. Renew your mind, renew your mind. Renew your mindset. Renew the way you think about life. What if, here's some suggestions for you. 
what if you just take a step back and look at your life and ask God, God, help me just assess what is going on in my life. Am I being productive? Am I moving forward? Am I pr producing something? Am I creating something? Am I taking care of my family? Am I, am I blessing others? Uh, what, are, are you taking initiative or are you just in inertia? Initiative says, I'm going to try this. Well, that didn't work. I'm going to try this. Okay, that didn't work. I'm going to try this. Inertia just goes, I'm going to sit on the couch and eat potato chips. <laughs> what difficult decisions or conversations are you putting off because they're difficult? I, I think maybe we all have at least one in that category. I don't know. Maybe some of you are so productive. You just ugh, tackle those head on. Those sometimes get me stalled. So who have you been avoiding talking to or what situation you've been avoiding dealing with? Who could you ask for help to know what to do to, to deal with that difficult situation? Where are you procrastinating? Are you relying on handouts or bailouts as a permanent way of life when you don't need to? Have you been busy with non-productive things? Things that don't pave the way for a better future for you and your family? Are you easily distracted? Do you make excuses for not working? I, I can't tell you how many times over the years someone will ask for financial help and they, they'll say something like, I would, do any, I would do anything. I would work. I would take any job. I just, I just can't find any job right now. And I'll say, I have a connection here, and I could probably hook you up with a job in a week. Oh, oh I can't do that. You know, I have a, I have a thing. I'm, I'm a little colorblind. I, I don't think I could do that. They, and they just start making excuses to not work. God provides for you later through your productivity now. So what if, here's another suggestion, what if you just simply invite the Holy Spirit into your struggle if you're struggling with productivity or if you're seeing some laziness creep in here or there in your life because the Holy Spirit is here to help you, to guide you, to empower you, to help you move forward. What if you just simply follow Jesus' example and you realize, okay, balance isn't equal, like one day work, one day rest, one day play, and then back to one day work. That's not, that's not biblical balance. What did Jesus do? He completed the work the Father gave him to do. What if you followed Jesus' example and relied on his power to do it? What if you say yes to productivity and enjoy the benefits of that instead of all the negative feelings, depletion, envy of, of just spinning your wheels? What if you got a mentor? Or what if you just asked a friend who seems wise in certain areas? Can you help me? I've got, some, I've got some things I've been procrastinating on. Would you just help me find a first step? And I have found so many times someone else who comes in fresh, like uh, I've had it happen to me where someone will go, why don't you just do that? Like just do this specific thing. And I'll just do it. And it's enough to get momentum going. Like that's what I needed. I just needed a one little thing where someone said, well, why don't you just do this? And it happened recently so helpful to me. Like, I'm like, I, oh, I don't know. Should I do this? Should I do that? This seems hard. Why don't you just do this? Okay, that was enough. And it was because I, I just found a mentor in that, in, that, in that moment. What if you just take one step? Just take one step and do something in that area that you're stalled out in, something you've been avoiding. Here's what I believe would happen. You would feel a sense of fulfillment and joy and relief to make some progress in that area where you've been stalled out. You would feel relief that you are that you're doing what you can do to prepare for your future. Future might just be in a week or it might be 10 years down the road. You would you would find joy knowing that you're following Jesus' footsteps and receiving God's blessing. You would find momentum, which makes even more productivity possible in your life. And I know this is the strangest message I think I've ever preached. I don't know that I've ever preached on this, but it's part of the Bible. It's part of God's wisdom for your life. It is an essential mindset for you to have a great life. How many want a great life? Would you stand to your feet? And let's pray. Online, pray with me. In the room, let's pray. Let's just set aside distractions. Lord, we just talk to you right now in prayer. Lord God, we're coming to you. We're bringing you our life. We're bringing you our struggles. We're bringing you the good times. We're bringing you our strengths. We're bringing everything to you right now. And Lord, we're just asking that you would come and that you would help us 
to be the most productive, creative people on the planet. Lord, I pray that I would get calls from people in the, in the uh, Southeast Puget Sound region to say, I want people from your church to work on my team because they seem to be the most productive people around. Lord, I pray that that's how we would be, that we'd pre- be productive in, uh, in attacking those things that are hard in our life, that we'd be productive in planning and caring for our family going forward, that we'd be productive in caring for our church and providing for the future of our church that we'd be productive in helping people in the community around us come to Jesus. Lord, I pray that we'd be productive, Lord, that at the end of the summer, that we'd be able to bring you the produce of some kids who came to Jesus because of our ministry. That we'd be able to bring to you some of the produce of a life that was encouraged because we gave them a smile and a prayer on Sunday morning. Lord, I pray that we would produce those kinds of results, results that please you, that honor you, and that provide for us. Thank you, Lord, that you provide for us. Lord, I pray that you would energize us going from this place, that you would energize us to be productive and creative and producing and getting stuff done for Jesus and in our lives, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Whether your head's still bowed, I want to give you one more invitation, and it is a work invitation. It's an invitation to become an apprentice of Jesus Christ. You recognize that that phrase, apprentice. An apprentice of Jesus is someone who follows him and gets in the yoke with him, like a a cattle's yoke, gets and works with Jesus, and Jesus works with you. I want to invite you to become a Christian, and that's really a big chunk of what a Christian is. It's someone who is an apprentice of Jesus, learning to live like Jesus. How do you become saved? How how do you become a Christian? How do you become his apprentice? Well, you turn from your sin, turn your life over to Jesus, and let him lead. It just starts with a prayer. And I don't know where where you are, if you've um, been following Jesus, if you've been doing your own thing, if you need to come back to Jesus. I, I just want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus to save you and invite you to become his apprentice. If you want to do that today, would you just raise your hand? And that's a signal to me. Pastor, pray for me. I love it. Hands just shoot right up. That is, that's so, that's so great. So today, what I want to invite you to do then is turn away from your sins. That sounds like a possible life change. I'm going to invite you to turn your lives over to Jesus, where you say, Jesus, I belong to you now. I give you the keys of my heart and of my life, my family, my future. I give myself to you, Lord. And then you say, Jesus, lead me, lead me. Several hands went up today, and and, and I I want you to know that if you will pray this prayer in faith today, the answer will be yes. You will be saved. You will be changed. Your life will belong to Jesus, and it will be awesome. So would you just pray with me? Let's all just pray together just for solidarity. But if you raised your hand just now, would you pray a saving prayer right now? Say this to Jesus with all of your heart, like you mean it with faith. Let's, let's pray after me. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I, incur- I acknowledge I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to give you my life, to let you lead, starting now. Change me from the inside out. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We just welcome you. That is awesome. That is awesome. We've got a following Jesus course for you, and there were several of you in this room who who raised your hand. If you have not taken this course, I am asking you to be productive. Take this online course. I think if they did the whole thing in one sitting, it would be two hours. But if you do it just like one chunk, every few days, 15 minutes, following Jesus, that will strengthen you and help you follow Jesus. Tell us a little bit more. Where do we get that? Awesome. So if you drop by the Following Jesus booth in the lobby, I will be out there, or a member, productive member of our church will be out there. Uh, <laughs> um, just ask us for, we, there's a little like baggie with a free book, free course. Again, yeah, the book is like 50 pages. I zoomed through the training in like two hours. It's just biblical basics, like reading your Bible. Who is the Holy Spirit? Why, why do we even get baptized? It, it's really it, it, it's really easy to go through. It's in, a, it's in an easy digestive 
the easy to digest fashion or format. So please stop by the Following Jesus booth. We'd love to give that gift to you. Um, and also, if you have um, your Connect cards, please drop those off on the box on the way out. And everyone listen. We are having our Mega Sports Camp Rally right now, right after service. So if you felt a tugging at your heart to serve, if even if you didn't feel a tugging at your heart to serve, <laughs> please stop. Please stay with us. Stay with us. We'll talk about it. Free lunch for everyone. And we could use some help setting up for that. We're going to have four tables in the front. One, two, three, four, with eight chairs around the eat around the around them so if you guys could all help set that up that would be great you don't have to you can just tear down chairs the first half of the chairs the front half not the back half okay we love you guys i'll see you soon god bless